getting your downswing into a position where you're giving yourself the best possible opportunity to strike that ball with compression and consistency is crucial. So in this video with special guest Hugh Ma, we're gonna show you one of our favorite exercises to stop you from getting so narrow in transition, give you a little bit more width and help you get that ball fizzing off the face. Let's get stuck in. All right, Hugh, so one of the main things that I've struggled with for a long time in my career of working the club throughout the motion was getting a little bit too narrow in transition. I tend to get okay. a little bit too much of this over hinging of my wrists. Yep. And I was looking at your Instagram and I saw this great drill that you're working with one of your tour players yep. talking about using and inventing a feel uh, of creating an opposing force in the downswing. I'd yep. just love for you to run that through for me. Well, basically the issue tends to be that, I mean, that you're experiencing is that the excessive pulling force in transition creates too much lag effectively. And that can also impact how your, uh, how your left wrist or your lead wrist works. Because basically the more you lag it, the more the lead wrist is going to go into this shape, which opens the face. And, uh, and this drill that we, that we came up with was basically trying to find a way to use the right arm better to maintain the width. Mm -hmm. And we actually started with a split hand drill, yeah. which had a decent effect. Okay. But then the player started to mess around with sliding the, the, uh, the, the trail hand, the right hand up and down the shaft as he moved. And that gave him the feel of creating, say we're talking about equal and opposing forces, yeah. that an excess of pull force will produce a certain amount of, or a certain group of results, an excess of throw force will do the opposite. And to be effective, you've got to manage the pair, okay? Yeah. So my preference would be that there's more of a throw before a pull, but unfortunately in the golf industry, we've been taught yeah. for 120 <laughs> years lag it in there as much to as lag it, can. Yeah. which in terms of that piece of advice for club players, particularly club players that move it right, couldn't be a worse piece of advice. This is that this drill was, was really something that, that Lucas came up with himself um, as a product of going with a split hand grip. So set it up for me. And I want you to, to, uh, to move your right hand lower down the shaft. So we're just gonna slide that down the shaft up to the top. Swing to the top of the backswing for me. Okay, so you're just gonna separate your hands out a little bit more. So your job, is to slide your right hand down the grip as you transition, which will create greater width here wow. rather than that excessive pulling shape that we see here. Okay, up to the top again. So as you transition, we wanna slide your right hand down the grip, which will create greater width. Then you're in a position to create the pulling force. So the pulling force is happening, it's just happening later. Okay. That's such a great feel. That's such a great feel because when I'm moving this to the top, and the, I love this for the fact that it also, you get one thing for free here in regards to the movement to the top of ensuring that we are not creating this super narrow feel at the top. So we've got nice structure and width here through doing the split hand grip drill here. And that's, that's quite a key point because an awful lot of the time you'll see this excessive characteristic as a product of it being quite narrow, narrow. at the top. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so creating that width here and then understanding how to apply the width and transition to create a more appropriate impact. Yeah. Now, I think it's worth stressing here that one thing I see an awful lot with players looking to hit fade, and the player we're talking about is, is definitely trying to fade it, is that creating pull and hold on helps you fade it. Well, actually it doesn't, it pushes you more towards a draw bias. And understanding that, that if we're looking to line up a good fade impact, this shape mm -hmm. is more desirable than this shape. Yeah. This shape obviously being a product of excessive pull in transition, this shape being a product of matching throw and pull. And in terms of low point control, was he struggling to uh, get a consistent bottom to the swing when he was first doing this? Obviously he's a high level player, so he managed it well, but. In short, yes. Um, and it's not necessarily the location of the low point that's the issue. It's the depth of the low point. So the more you're going into this shape, the more the low point is sent down under the ball. Still striking the ground in the same place, but the player's vertical strike point starts to suffer. And the minute you're striking it up and down the face, trajectory control, spin control becomes really difficult, and then distance control is non-existent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just detailing that for the players at home, it's talking about you could have the same angle of attack, let's say the 100%. club is descending, yep. but there's a big difference between the bottom of the golf swing occurring too high relative to the ball and then too low. And so, again, that would be more of a draw characteristic, that slightly deeper divot, yeah. fade characteristic shallowing it off. Now, 
coming up with this drill through that experimentation, uh, I suppose this is important to note that as coaches, when we're standing on the team, we're working with our players, it's that open communication that then allows us to adapt and change throughout the lesson yep. relative to a player's feel. 100%, and, and that's where we've all, as coaches, we've all got this kind of group or library of drills that we use. And actually the majority of them have been drills that I've started with that the player has then adapted to, to fit their yeah. feel more. Yeah, and that changes all the time as well. 100%. The player 100%. may nail it the first day and then two weeks later, they've got some mix mash of a couple of others. Yeah. And it might not be as beneficial for them at that stage. And, and that's where coaching golf is, is so interesting in that if, basically to be an effective golfer, having components that correspond with one another is desirable. And then when you've got components that are fighting one another, yeah. that's when you start to see any standard of player struggling. Yeah. So they may have draw component here, fade component here, shallow here, deep here. It's understanding that if you can start to match them up, you're then in a position where you can make that golf swing much, much better functioning. Okay, so let's work through this exercise again. So for the players at home who are getting a little bit too narrow in transition, and for me, exactly what you detailed at the beginning, I would tend to get into a position where my lead wrist would cup, then my delivery, exactly. Now, this is worth stressing, I think, Garrett, that a lot of the time we see people being encouraged to create lag mm -hmm. to fix slices. Mm -hmm. Now, if you put the club in this position, so that face is so open that you're never gonna be able to manage, <laughs> yeah. manage anything other than a big slice. Yeah. And that is the product of you creating excessive pull down. Yeah. The more you pull here, the more the wrist does this. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you can start to get more of that shape, mm -hmm. as a product of the greater width, yeah. then you can apply the club in a stronger position. Yeah. Yeah. Now the way I'm gonna encourage you to do this drill, let's get rid of the ball just now. Up to the top. Split hand it for me. Okay, so slowly down. Slowly down, keep going. Now I want you to move all the way through to follow through. Okay. So you can start to relate what we've done here mm -hmm. with a more appropriate impact and follow through. Because okay. sometimes players find it easier to relate to the follow through feel than they do the transition feel. So every practice swing up to the top, down, into follow through. Okay, sliding it down as well? Sliding it down. Love it, love it, and again. Yeah, it feels like it's been thrown away a lot earlier. So we're throwing it sooner, and then we're applying our pulling force as we travel through the impact zone. And I can feel that through my left side, that is extending up. Yep. A lot of awareness, I obviously feel like my body is working harder and rotating more through impact as well. And actually, this is where we end, actually with this player, this is why we ended up here. And then I'm seeing his, his left shoulder doing some doing some stuff I didn't particularly like. It was too much towards the target and too far yeah. towards the floor, mm -hmm. which again, that's obviously dealing with the low point issue we talked about. Now, instantly, the moment he started working better here, this shape improved. Yeah. So we're getting a lot of good stuff for free. Yeah. This fixes this. When we were focusing on this, we were seeing very, very little in terms of improvement. Yeah, yeah, Since yeah. we went here, something changed. And I've done a lot of work with um, Steve Furlonger on yep. speed and exactly what you were saying, <coughs> relating that back to creating more power throughout the motion. Yep. It's this feeling as we're coming down wider earlier and then that allows you to then push Correct. and really deliver that moment of impact with a little bit more force. Because we're, we're effectively, we're looking at swing geometry here, right? Yep. It's a basic, I mean, impact is a, is a primary equation. It's physics and geometry, nothing else. And if you're going to go this way, you have to shorten the radius to make contact. If you were to do this, you're gonna fat it. Yeah. So working to the top and going this way, suddenly the body is forced to move in a different shape to create appropriate impact. Yeah. Now, what I would then do is explore another drill mm -hmm. to help you understand the, the sort of correlation between that and that. Okay. okay. So up to the top for me, normal grip. So I want you to dump the head in the ground a foot behind the ball. Okay, now you've created width. Now obviously that's not particularly functional because you're about to hit it a foot behind the ball. Mm -hmm. Now you can start to understand where the pull up is gonna come to get appropriate low point and get the face on the ball. So it's really, I mean, a, a lot of my coaching, I've got two or three drills that I'll use in, a, in sort of order mm -hmm. to make it more and more usable for the player. Yeah. So once we've understood how to create this, which is very much about the width and transition, what's gonna happen next? Well, dump it in the floor, 
pull it out the floor. That's going to get the body working more appropriately. I use this drill all the time with the mid-range handicapper who's struggling with the torso and the hips rotating very early, yep. not getting the arms back in front. I'll just place the golf ball back and behind their right foot, very similar to what you're doing. And I was saying, do whatever is required to get that yep. golf ball landing, that club landing behind the golf ball, and then push yeah, it that. towards the target. Love that. And that sequence there really just gives them exactly the same feeling, combining of what you were just talking about. And perfectly highlights that you've got two very similar drills, two different ways of doing it relative to the player and what they... For the coaches out there, it's important that you're, the drills you, you, you give to the player, they're for spe a specific reason. Yeah. And we've got there, that's very specifically a transition drill. Yeah. This is much more of a movement impact drill. Yeah. Understanding that it's important to separate them rather than kind of throw it all together at once. Yeah. And if you give players a couple of drill options, we can find out which one works for them. And drills are there for one reason, it's to give the player the feel of appropriate, nothing else. And if that drill doesn't give the feel of appropriate, you need to go look in somewhere else. There needs yeah. to be another drill that you rely on. And the feel matching up with the intention of what they're trying to achieve as 100%. well. So when they're by themselves, they can use visual feedback. Yep. Um, if they're there with a coach and they go, well, this feels like it is in this position. Yep. And then you get the positive confirmation from yourself or the camera that it is actually that. Correct. Because there's no point going, I think that's right. Correct. And it's out of position. And developing feels through drills, because yeah. as a coach, we can't possibly tell a player what to feel, right? Yeah, yeah. We have to give them the tools to identify their own correct feel, mm -hmm. then they can run with it. Mm. Yeah, and uh, that comes through experience. You don't want to make assumptions, but through watching a lot of players work through certain drills, we come up with an idea that yeah. it should feel like this, especially being a player yourself. Yeah. Yeah, Correct. and you get the sensation. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to rehearse that once more yeah. and then hit one down there. I'm going to use this myself because I do get a little bit too narrow. So split grip, getting to the top. I'm feeling like the hands are moving down into impact, yeah. no, following you can through. You can exaggerate that more. Yeah, I'm going to try. Okay, I'm going to put you in position, okay, up the top. So I really want to feel that, okay? Now your hand's going to be slid, slid up by then. Now we're talking. Yeah. Okay, that's now into a really strong fade bias position. Mm -hmm. Then you can work the body the way we've discussed. Up the top again. Okay. Exaggerate it. Okay, go. Hard. Bang. There. All right. Let's hit one down there. I'm going to recreate that same sort of sensation fresh out of the box. Mm -hmm. 